Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on Forgotten Weapons. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company taking a look at some of the guns in their upcoming February 2015 regional auction. And one of the cool sets here is actually a Fiala Arms model 1920. This is actually a pair of combination guns. Uh, these were manufactured starting in, obviously, 1920. Uh, the Fiala company made them through 1923, at which point the Fiala company went out of business. Uh, but the, the guns continued to be produced and sold into the 1930s by a couple of other companies, uh, Columbia and Shawls. Uh, you will occasionally see the guns with their markings. In this case, both of these are fairly early guns. They're both made by Fiala. Now, Anthony Fiala was a renowned polar explorer of the time and kind of all-around adventurer. Um, he also actually did an, an Amazon expedition with none other than Theodore Roosevelt. And then later in his life, he translated some of this public notoriety into uh, work as an entrepreneur. So he put his name behind this particular gun company. These pistols were actually designed by a fellow named Lucius Diem, uh, who went on to also be the, the man responsible for patenting the high standard pistols, which you'll notice look very similar to these, that's why. Originally these guns were sold as a cased set. You would get one frame, and then you'd get a seven inch barrel for a target pistol, You'd get a 20-inch barrel for uh, use as a rifle, a detachable shoulder stock, particularly to go with the long barrel, and then you'd also get a three and a half inch barrel, which we don't have an example of here. This came in a nice case, you got everything all together, and you could interchange whatever barrel and stock combination you wanted. So let's go ahead and bring the camera in and take a little bit of a closer look at how these work, because they're not quite what you would expect. So you'll see this is marked Fiala Arms and Equipment Company, New Haven, Connecticut, right back here. Uh, most of the early guns were made by Fiala. They did end up going out of business in 1923. Um, the, the patent and the tooling were taken over by some other companies. You'll also find these marked Columbia uh, and also marked Shawl Company. Both of those companies went on building these. Now, to get to how this actually works, this is a manually repeating pistol. So we have a detachable 10 round magazine, 22 long rifle, caliber. And then on this side, we have a safety lever here that simply locks the trigger. This one's a little bit loose. And then we have a bolt release. Now the bolt sprung open here because it was cocked. If it wasn't cocked, what you would have to do is manually pull the bolt open. You can then chamber a cartridge. There we have that chamber cartridge by physically pushing the bolt shut. Doing that cocks the striker spring and it's ready to fire. I don't want to dry fire this because it is a rim fire gun and I don't want to peen up the, uh, the face of the chamber, but once you've got the, the slide closed, you fire around and then after you fire, nothing happens other than the bullet flies out the barrel. Then in order to cycle the gun, what you have to do is actually pull down this release pull the slide back. The lips of the magazine back here actually act as your ejectors. You can see right there, they would hit the empty casing that's held in the breech face. That kicks out your empty round. Uh, this top piece, that top piece right there is the firing pin. Uh, pull back the slide, eject the empty, and then you're ready to push the slide forward chamber another round and fire again. So you might be wondering why why would you go to all this machine work and not make it semi-auto? Well, there are a couple reasons. Um, primarily, I think from the company's point of view, this made the guns cheaper. That uh, made them cheaper to manufacture. It also meant they could be sold cheaper and compete better. Uh, they were marketed as being more reliable because you didn't have a, any sort of semi-auto action that could go wrong. Um, particularly in the 1920s, ammunition wasn't quite as consistent as it is now. This would certainly be more, more reliable with, you know, possibly low quality ammunition since you're, you're manually cycling it each time. Uh, these were also advertised as being more accurate because they had, they were simpler. Um, and they were actually also advertised as being, as uh, giving you a higher velocity on the cartridge because none of the, the energy of firing was taken up by cycling the action. Now that was kind of an early claim with a lot of semi-auto pistols. Uh, people were concerned that you were losing some ballistic efficacy 
by having this semi-auto action, and that's really not the case. Um, but at the time, it was fairly widely spoken about. All right, now the one really cool other feature of the Fialas is, of course, I mentioned at the beginning, they came as a boxed set. In order to swap out the barrel, all you have to do is take this screw right here, unscrew it, and it just comes right out. And then I'm going to open the slide. Now, the barrel unscrews. By the way, you have to open the slide because the ejector or the extractor is sitting in the extractor groove otherwise. So the barrel comes out just like that. You can see there's some threading here at the chamber end. So we also have this semicircular notch. That notch is what the pin sits in to keep the barrel in place. Once the barrel's out, all you have to do is thread in a new barrel. of any length. We're going to run it until it indexes. Put our pin back in, our screw. Tighten it down and you're good to go. So this is our 7 inch target model. And then this is the 20 inch rifle model. In order to make this a little more practically accurate, they also offered and this came with your cased set of components, a detachable buttstock. These are attached with the use of a single screw here. Let me go get a screwdriver. Which I should have had over here the whole time. One screw that holds it in place, however, there is also, see there's also a locator pin as well as the screw. Those fit into the back of the grip frame here. So the screw holds it in place, the pin prevents it from wobbling too much. And then this stock, of course these pistols were made before the National Firearms Act was passed, so there was no legal distinction between a pistol or, a, frankly, at the time, there was no such legal thing as a short-barreled rifle. Um, so you could simply go and attach your shoulder stock to the pistol if you wanted it that way, although it was clearly intended for the long-barreled version to give you a better, better sight picture, a better hold. There are several models of Fialas. You'll find them with a number of, of slightly varying features. There are like five different versions of rear sight. Um, these are both the early rear sight. That flips up and then it has, zoom in on that. All right, so this is the early version of the Fiala rear sight, the original version. Uh, you have a little notch here for normal use. And then particularly if you have the long barrel and the shoulder stock, you can flip it up you can see it's got a, a little aperture sight there. Uh, the, the tab that that aperture is in will slide up and down a bit, although it's not uh, demarcated and this one's actually frozen up. Well, thanks for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Learned something about an interesting new pistol you may not have been aware of before. And of course, if you'd like to own these two examples yourself or a couple others that are also in the catalog, these are for sale at Rock Island Auction Company in the February 2015 premier uh, regional auction. So I've got a link right below to uh, their catalog page. It's lot 5508. Go there, take a look at their high res pictures, their description, and place a bid if you're interested. Thanks for watching.